all sports have their share of injuries and rugby is no different. One of the most important ways in dealing with these rugby injuries when they occur is the primary survey of the injured player. Treatment already starts here. The primary survey consists of HHH and CAB. This stands for hazards, hello, help, compressions, airway and breathing. Rob DeVette and Ian Klopper, Emergency Medical Service Training Specialist, provides some important tips and information on managing head, neck or spine injured players correctly on field. When running onto the field to attend to a player, you'll need to follow the same vital steps each time. Hazards. Hazards can be defined as a potential risk to the safety of you, the player or the people around the player. Ensure that it is safe to approach the player. If player is still underway, check that there are no players rushing down toward you. If the player is lying in the middle of the players, wait for the player to move on or for the referee to stop player and call you onto the field. Do not run onto the field and assume that the player will stop. Hello. 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 When you arrive at the player and notice that they're not looking at you, tap the player on each shoulder and say hello into each ear. This is to assess the player's level of consciousness. If there is no response, the player is unconscious and requires urgent medical assistance. If the player responds, inform the player that you are there to assist them and instruct them to lie still until you have completed your assessment. Help. Guys, some help please. Fieldside Rugby Medics. Call on your colleagues or assistants to help you. Signal them to bring any equipment that you might need. Boxmart Spine Line. If the player is unconscious or has an obvious or suspected severe head, neck or spinal injury, activate the Boxmart Spine Line service and Fieldside Paramedics or doctors where applicable. If the player is unresponsive, and not breathing, not breathing normally or gasping, call for immediate assistance, roll the player over and align the player's spine and perform 30 compressions. 28, 29, 30. Rolling the player over. If the player is lying on his side or face down, the medic needs to ensure that the player is safely rolled onto their back as quickly as possible whilst maintaining inline cervical spine stabilization. This is not an easy task and if not done properly could be potentially life-threatening for the player, especially if he has an unstable spinal injury. Firmly grasp the player's head and hold it in its relative position as the player is rolled onto his back. This means that the player's head remains in the same angle and position it was found in in relation to their neck, shoulders and body throughout the process of rolling the player over. Once on their back, if the player's neck is not in the neutral position, the medic will need to apply gentle traction and realign the spine by slowly moving it into the neutral or normal position. Compressions. In order to circulate the oxygen in the player, you need to push the player's chest to pump the heart and cause the blood to circulate. To do this, you need to locate the sternum or breastbone, place the heel of your one hand on the sternum between the nipple line. Place your second hand on top of your first hand, interlocking your fingers. With your elbows straightened and your shoulders directly over your hands, you may now begin compressions. Compress the chest. 30 times, approximately 5 centimeters deep each time, at a rate of approximately 100 compressions per minute. Make sure that you are releasing the chest completely between compressions and that you are not bouncing on the chest. Compressions must be rhythmic and relatively aggressive. In the event of a rib breaking, continue chest compressions. Airway. In order for a person to live, they need to breathe air into their lungs. The air needs to flow down a passage of structures to get to the lungs. We call this passage the airway. When a patient is lying unconscious on his back, their muscles are relaxed and the back of their tongue tends to drop, thereby blocking the passage of air to the lungs. Contrary to belief, a player cannot swallow their tongue. We do, however, need to open, maintain and protect the airway. Open. 
Recently, there's been much debate around how best to maintain an open airway in an unconscious rugby player, especially in a player with a potentially compromised cervical spine. Opening a player's airway under normal conditions is a relatively simple task. Once there is a suspected spinal injury, this procedure becomes slightly more complicated. There are three techniques that one could utilize depending on the circumstances. Number one, the chin lift. In an unconscious player with a suspected spinal injury, opening the airway remains the highest priority, but we need to take extra precautions while doing so. One medic needs to lie down and secure inline cervical spine stabilization, securing the head in the neutral position. A second medic is needed to perform a chin lift. This is done by placing two fingers under the chin and applying a forward upward movement. The player's chin lifts up, moving the tongue from the base of the airway, thereby opening it. Number two, the jaw thrust. If you have been trained and qualified to do so, you can also perform a jaw thrust technique instead of the chin lift to open the airway on a player with a suspected spinal injury. Whilst maintaining a firm hold on the player's forehead, position your fingers under the player's jawbone and apply upward pressure, thereby opening the airway. For the lay practitioner, this might be difficult to perform, therefore the chin lift is the preferred technique. Number three, the head tilt chin lift. In a player without a suspected spinal injury, one would normally open a player's airway using a technique called the head tilt chin lift. This is when the palm of your hand is placed on the player's forehead and two fingers of your other hand are placed on the player's chin. The player's head is tilted backwards whilst the chin is simultaneously lifted upwards. While performing this technique, the head tilt should nonetheless be performed gently and with minimal extension of the neck or cervical spine itself. Excessive or aggressive movement could easily cause further injury to a player with a cervical spinal injury. So you're only advised to utilize this technique if the chin lift or the jaw thrust techniques are unsuccessful and do not open the player's airway sufficiently for breathing or CPR to be effective. Maintain. To ensure that the player's airway is maintained, keep your hands in that position at all times. If you release the hold, the head will return to its original position and the airway might well become blocked again. Reopen the player's airway again as soon as possible. Protect. It is up to you to make sure that the airway does not become blocked again by incorrect position, vomit, or any foreign object like the player's mouth guard. The mouth guard needs to be removed and handed to the coach or referee. If a player has false teeth or dental bridge, you can leave them in unless they become an obstruction to the airway. Vomit drill. If a player vomits, you need to use your team to immediately turn the player lateral by log rolling him onto his side and perform a vomit roll. Once the player has been turned onto their side and the head is fully supported in the neutral position throughout the duration of turning the player, use your index and middle finger to do a finger sweep of the player's mouth to remove any vomit that has not been expelled from the mouth. This vomit can easily sip down the throat and into the player's lungs causing major problems. It is critical to ensure that the airway is clear of any vomit. Breathing. After appropriately opening the airway, insert a CPR mouthpiece and perform two rescue breaths. CPR mouthpiece. The CPR mouthpiece is a plastic barrier device with a one-way valve that prevents you from getting any saliva or blood from the player into your mouth. If the player splutters or vomits, the CPR mouthpiece will also prevent the player's vomit from entering your mouth. Open and insert the CPR mouthpiece correctly with the circular piece facing upwards and the one-way valve allowing air into the player. Ensure that your fingers do not touch the top surface of the mouthpiece plastic cover as you'll be placing your mouth over that part and you will be getting fluids and dirt from your hands into your mouth. While performing the appropriate airway opening technique, pinch the player's nose closed with your fingers underneath the plastic skirt of the mouthpiece. 
Put your mouth over the entire mouthpiece, ensuring that you form a lip seal around the player's mouth and blow into the player. If you use the circle of the mouthpiece as a straw, you will not get air into the player properly as it will escape through the sides of the player's mouth. Blow firmly, not as hard as possible, or you could cause serious lung injuries. Watch the player's chest. As it begins to rise, stop blowing and release the nose. Listen to the air as it comes out of the player. As you hear it stop, close the nose again and administer a second breath. Release the nose and listen to the air come out. If you do not have a mouthpiece, you can perform chest-only CPR, whereby you perform the chest compressions without administering ventilations to the player. Perform chest-only CPR until someone gets a CPR mouthpiece for you. Then revert to normal CPR ratios of 30 compressions to two breaths. Reassess breathing every five cycles. Continue with CPR until the player begins to breathe again and there are signs of life, or help arrives and takes over, or you are physically unable to continue, or it becomes unsafe for you to continue. Two, three, he's breathing. Fantastic, well done guys. The secondary survey is a systematic, methodical check of the injured player to accurately determine the exact nature and extent of their injury. You cannot assume that the only injury sustained is the one that you can see. Too often an injured player is treated for the visible or primary injury and an underlying injury is ignored almost completely. Be guided by how the injury happened. The most important areas to take note of in rugby are injuries to the head, neck and cervical spine. Diaphragmatic breathing. Prior prism. Tell me if you feel any pain where I'm touching you. Move your right foot for me. Move this foot for me. There is no movement in the right foot. Move this left foot for me. Can't. Move the left foot. There is no movement in the left foot. Squeeze my hand. Squeeze my hand. Yeah, there's no pressure on the right hand. Squeeze your left hand. Squeeze my hand. There's no pressure. 